life is beautiful like sea asia my entrance was independent but we made you the challenge that's killing me is to balance humility with my ability to stunt like lee major when i was pissing poor i had a vision board as my screensaver i envisioned tours on g4s mink blazers hopping out with pink gators unhinging doors like c4 ringing alarms like tennis saw p more the club going up like seesaws abroad we score so much no need to keep score petite broads who eat raw greet us at customs teach us the customs and traditions of foreign soil royal dignitaries sending emissaries to meet moors Peace family, welcome to another episode of Underground Railroad Productions. This is your host Rich. Out here in Harlem, man, I caught Red working. I caught Red doing his thing, designing these shirts, printing these shirts, man. You can see his fly clothing on right now, but he had to do an interview with me real quick. Welcome back, my brother Red Hill. Thanks for having me. Peace. All right, my brother, you've been out of town, you was in Vegas. Yeah, shout out to Vegas, man. Wow. <laughs> Yo, that shit look dope on Instagram. Yeah. What's your Instagram, my brother, so they can see it? What's your Instagram, real quick? E L underscore Filthmore, P H I L T H M O O R. Or you could just put Red Pillar in the search and, engine. And it come up. Yeah, but shout out to Vegas, man. They came look out dope. and showed Supreme Love. Uh, me and Blue Pillar working on a residency in Vegas, meaning that. There's so much work to be done down Fuck, there. Is you Jennifer Lopez, man? I'm fucking nah. in a residency, man. Yeah, I'm more like Bojangles. <laughs> Meaning that we want to we wanna get on, you know, we want to be able to come out there once a month and do workshops, seminars. Like, we didn't do Dope. a lecture. We did a production. Mm. Dope. I think Dope. lectures is out the window. Woo. We were in a real theater. This was a production. I had sound. We had visuals. We had uh, people on the booth lighting. You know what I mean? We had people open up for us. Everybody who was a part of that um, experience, I want to salute you. And um, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna, when that it's in post production right now, but when that's available, uh, we'll put it out there. That was called from blackface to blueface. You know what I'm saying? So we laid it out. Yo, when you got something coming on Patreon. We got something with you on Patreon yes. coming up. And we, 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 we started uh, the momentum in Vegas for the Facts 2020. Because no. like I said, Vegas is a town that has, uh, they see thousands of conventions every year. I used to go to Vegas to the Magic Show. That's a trade show for clothing designers and, you know, sellers and buyers. So, you know... The Facts 2020 is going to be, um, we're going to be sharing that with the Patreon audience. That's an acronym for Food, Art, Clothing, Technology, and Shelter. It also stands for Finances, Arms, Coding, uh, Transportation, and also Strategy. So we're going, to be we're going to be rolling that out. I've been working on it for years now. So we have the 2020 edition for Facts we're going to be sharing that with the family. Also, in Connecticut, March 9th, with the God, Bada, Kambada, we have a lecture on March 9th in New Haven. That's going to be monumental as well. Red Pill, man. Let's get to the topic. Let's talk about it. Bro, we got a lot going on. Politics involved. Politics is you. Changes is happening. Yes, they are. Grassroots level. That's right. And, um... I just see the video. <laughs> I mean, because I mean, we find these white people, we think they are heroes because they do a little shuck of their job or whatever. And we think Bertie said, what well, Bertie said his main thing was he marched with King, right? Was that his talking point? I well, marched with King or something? Marched some... with King. He worked at CORE with uh, Roy Ennis. Yeah. Who yeah. was a family member. Right. In peace. And, um, you know, that was his thing. In the and, 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 he, and he works with Killer Mike and all of that. Rolling with Killer. Yeah, rolling with Killer Mike. So check it out. So a sister asked Bernie Sanders about reparations, and he so disrespectfully just walked away. I showed you. I showed you the video. He's not buying that, bro. Red Pill. There's this huge movement right now. A D O S. American descendants of slaves. That's right. Shout out to Yvette Carnell, mm -hmm. 
Tone Talks. I've uh, been watching Tariq Nasheed uh, talking about it. That's right. Uh, those three main individuals I've seen, like, really just... I'm familiar Kill. with it through the brother Tariq Nasheed. I'm not right. really you know your vet and tone yeah, talks. I gotta, they, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, yeah. I gotta drink. They go hard. Well. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta yeah, tune into them. Pillars more right attuned to what they talking about. But but listen, um, it's oh man, it's beautiful. I've never seen nothing like this. I've never seen nothing like this I see politically. It. Yeah, I see the movement. And um, I guess she asked Bertie. First of all, before I get into that, because I know the people, they wait for you to answer. All the Democrats are running to the Breakfast Club, right? To to explain themselves. Explain, explain themselves. Explain the and they fail them miserably. That's right. <laughs> yo, the, uh, uh, van, even with what, the soft layups. Yo, the soft layups. They're not even asking hard questions, bro. Mm -mm. Just simple. So what are you doing? So 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 like simple questions. And you then, can tell that it's all scripted, like, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like they, they know they're gonna ask that because they're yeah. like, all right, this is what the people are talking about on the internet. So we have to ask it just to seem authentic. That's right. They're failing miserably. The comment section, the likes versus dislikes ratio, and you know what they try to blame it on bots, Russian bots. That's crazy, new, yeah, crazy, that's bro. Remix. But that's that's the, the new villain. <laughs> that's it. It's pure yeah, we don't. Red, you you know, way. you you really don't exist. You're a Russian bot. I'm a bot. You're a bot. I'm a bot. So especially with the uh, red pill movement. Yeah, yeah according I'm to the Democrats, out. according to the Democrats and Roland Martin, we're bots. We don't really exist. That's right. But um, shout out to those, like I said, Yvette. Tone Talks, Tariq, and everybody else involved in the movement. I support it. Like, them, they doing their thing. But Bernie Sanders, man, the pressure is on the Democrats right now. I'm saying that to say this. Because of that and what we just talked about, yes. there's extra pressure. There was there used to be no pressure on the Democrats. They could just dance and do the nay-nay. And awesome. we like, hey, we like, hey, all right, yeah. they down. They welcome to the cookout. <laughs> but because of that, pressure's on them. Talk to me. Well, first and foremost, you know, it, it would be remiss of me to not give a shout out to all of the brothers and sisters who are part of the new black media who've been doing an excellent job of building up a grassroots movement. Uh, the Tangibles 2020 and the ADOS thing, it's a real thing. <laughs> like, it's a real movement. And they got bodies. Like, you know, you feel me? Like, they, they out here catching bodies either on Twitter or in real life. And, um, you know, it's something that's needed, especially in this uh, election cycle, which is very important. The 2020 election cycle is extremely important, um, especially for the progressiveness of our people and to define the direction and the trajectory of our race and where we're going collectively. Finally, we have some cohesiveness and some organization where people could come together and show the power of the collective. And that power is being felt all the way on Fox News, CNNBC, and it's shaking Capitol Hill. All the way from Twitter, from black Twitter, and it's a real movement. It, it would be the upgrade to what we saw in the earlier years with Black Lives Matter and things of that nature with the politically, um, you know, the politically suspect movements that people were calling out and saying, I don't think that these movements have any foundation in consciousness. I don't think these uh, movements have any foundation in uh, real black people, the real black movement versus the whole victimhood thing. Now they politicize the movement. Now they're politicizing their demands. Now they're politicizing the plight of the descendants of slaves in America, still suffering from post-traumatic slave disorder on the 400 year anniversary mind you mm. of That's slavery in america when trump or trump actually signed a house resolution a hr bill to acknowledge the 400 years of quote unquote slavery that has been recorded to begin in 1619 so we're in the 400th clip of the quote unquote curse and according to spiritualists this is supposed to be the year that it's up so the conversation that's what they say the spiritualists yeah. that's right so the conversation so we're right on time right on time wow. i mean when 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 it's all said and done and when the history books are able to write the story it will point to ados 
and other movements, grassroots movements, today, right now, not what you were doing in 16, 15, and 14 on YouTube or in the streets or your lectures or none of that is going to point to what has been done this year and what's standing out this year outside of you know a lot of the distractions is the mobilization of a grassroots movement that's actually you know uh towing the line and and pushing pushing these candidates to a more you know outside of their script they're pushing them away from the script and they're they're, they're testing them and all of the candidates, Cory Booker, Kamala Harris, and now huh, my guy, Bernard Sanders, they fail miserably. They fail miserably. Bernard Sanders is a democratic socialist. He doesn't necessarily, uh, you know, reparations is not his thing. Mm. Reparations is not his thing. That's not the platform that he's going to promote. He's a socialist. He's a democratic socialist. So I mean, so socialists don't promote uh, reparations. Not at all. Why? Why not? Not at all. They're more so about you know people, uh, the nat the manufacturing, the means of order of controlling production, and things of that <laughs> nature. Um, nationalizing industries. You know what I mean? That's extreme socialism and whatnot, Marxism and things of that nature, you know, but that's not what they subscribe to. They're not really about helping out those who have been, uh, you know, uh, done wrong. I think that when it comes to people like uh, Bernie and other Democrats, they will point to what is known as great society that was ushered in by another Democrat, a Dixie Democrat, who goes by the name of Lyndon Johnson, who was the president that took over after uh, JFK got assassinated. And he ushered in what we know now as Medicaid, uh, Social Security, uh, them food stamps that everybody got accustomed to. You know, he created the welfare society mm. with this deal called the Great Society that people don't talk about. I don't know why, but they don't bring it up enough because to this day, that's the those are the programs that are enabling and still holding up people to even make them not even ask for reparations. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There's a contingency of our people who are getting a check and some cheese and they're like, yo. We don't need reparations because we get a check every month. That's my reparations. That's how the government is paying me back by helping to feed these goddamn children of mine. So that's called the Great Society. The Great Society is being uh, upended by Trump. Uh, I think Bush Jr. threw some shots and, and you know, dismantled some things. <clears throat> but that's that's the, that, those are the programs that are being unraveled by Donald Trump and uh, his cohorts. So Bernie and them are like, yo, you niggas got your day already. You already got the layup in the 60s. How about that? In the 70s, we try to help you guys out. And they're more so invested in other situations like, you know, uh, small time America, middle America, you know, the farmers and whatnot. Um, you know, he's a he's a senator from Vermont. Mm. So he's looking at the he's looking at the opiate epidemic. Right. He's looking at other little things that are uh, affecting his state. I don't think that he has what, what he did in the '60s by marching. He wasn't the he wasn't in Vermont at that point. He's in Vermont now. So Vermont is on the front of his frontal lobe. Vermont is what he has to you know those are the people that he's basically he's coming from that standpoint his vantage point is from a Vermont person stand, uh, point of view and reparations don't have anything to do with that unfortunately what do you think about when when, when they say so many I mean so so many of these Democrats when they ask what are you doing? For uh, spe specifically, specific. I don't want to say specifically. Yeah, specifically, specifically, for black people, they say uh, they go to prison reform. That's an insult to a lot of. I mean, a lot of people. You read the comments, including me. That's a, that's a fucking insult. Yeah. So crime is a, is 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 a uh, <laughs> is something yet like. Come on, bro. Like it gotta be about crime. Everybody benefits. White people, the way they're abusing drugs right now, and what's it? The the opioids and all the fentanyl and all of that stuff. 
but they're going to tell us that, that, you know what I'm saying, that that's specifically for us. That's going to, you know, and, and Tyreek and them talked about the trickle down. Like they try to, every time we ask about what are you doing for us, they do some trickle down game where, oh, well, eventually it'll trickle down toward black people. So whatever, thing whatever, yeah, about. diversity, whatever benefits black people is going to benefit everybody. So talk to me about that, this prison reform, prison reform trick bag that they got. Goes right back to, you know, uh, policies that were set forth in the late seven, the, the, the late 60s, early 70s, the war on poverty, which uh, escalated into the war on drugs, and then it escalated into the war on terror. You have to realize that these Democrats are still going by a playbook. Okay. The playbook is telling mm -hmm. them that the black family has been crippled. It's called the pathology of, uh, no, the, the, the tangled pathology. And this is from the Moynihan Report. The Moynihan, Mo the Moynihan, the Moynihan, Moynihan Report? The Moynihan Report was instrumental in steering both Democrats and Republicans in America at the end of the day into you know it was the talking points it, it, it's, it's a detailed report Giving about some history now the black family and the destruction of the black family and why black people mm. will be permanent fourth class citizens mm. because of the absence of the father Woo. shout out to take off shout out i mean shout out to offset offset shout out to all of the rappers who are coming forward to be honest about where their pain is coming from and all of them mm. All of them. I'm Teach. talking about from Takashi. I know he's a rat. You know what I mean? He's Mickey Mouse. But <laughs> from that, we're talking about the quote unquote, um, yeah, I might have forgot, but it's called the Killmonger theme. You know what I mean? These these young black men who are angry, who are lashing out, thug life, the hate you gave little infants, F's everyone. They're talking about the loss of their father. Not that he died or anything, he's just not in the house. They're speaking about the fact that they're, that they're dysfunctional because daddy wasn't there. So the Moynihan Report, which was released around the time of Claudine and whatnot, it points to the fact that daddy wasn't there. It points to the fact that the quote unquote black family is a matriarchal family that it lives inside of a patriarchal society so it can't fit it doesn't work like it, it cannot work because it doesn't obey the rules of american society american society is a patriarchal society please don't get it messed up like please don't please don't um you know it's a it's a greco-roman society it's not catered around the woman is not catered around mama and whatnot black society is and what they're say, what they were saying in that report is as a result of the break of the tradition in the family where the man is not the breadwinner anymore. The man is not looked upon as the quote unquote man. That's going to cause all kind of pathologies uh, going down a line. So when they talk about prison reform and when they talk about all of these other things that are like band-aids and whatnot, they're speaking to those talking points. They're speaking to the fact that they know that our people are in legal slavery right now and we need some kind of reform. We need some kind of help, right? So that's what they point to. You know, they speak about the issues that we're going to rather than speaking about any kind of solutions rather because prison reform is so ambiguous i say slavery reform if somebody says something like that they they would make those antennas on the top of my head stand up because it they would it, it, it would it would speak because you got people like meek mill no offense to meek mills and any of the rappers and whatnot but they're doing prison reform but they won't do lyric reform you know what i'm saying like no, the slavery reform and a lot of those brothers that you saying free the shooters and whatnot, they, they got locked up based off of the lifestyle that they were living, based off of the culture that, that influenced them. So how about culture reform? How about hip hop reform? How about that? Let's do that first. And that will stop the endless cycle of black bodies going into these quote unquote plantations and whatnot. You feel me? The Pied Piper is blowing their flute. And they got our brothers and sisters walking into these uh, into these jail cells, into these cot, these cot, the three hots in a cot. And they got them walking into the graveyard and whatnot. So get rid of the Pied Piper. Shout out to Kells and whatnot. 
sit him down, sit the Pied Pipers down because the flute that a lot of these rappers are blowing are still influencing people. They might be down with reparations, ya ya ya, and all of these other things, but they become intoxicated when they listen to those lyrics. They become hypnotized by the, by the auto suggestions that a lot of these lyrics are telling them to do. Penitentiary chances, like your boy 21 said. You don't need to take penitentiary chances. So any kind of grassroots movements that are moving right now that's trying to or attempting to steer our brothers and sisters in the other direction other than the jail cells or the grave, I, I, I commend that. I salute that. You feel me? I salute that. So, you know, these are just talking points. It's almost like the Democratic playbook that they go by. Let's speak to the pain body of black folk. You know what I'm talking about? We know that there's a plight in black America. So let's just say that we're trying to reverse the plight. But you're not showing us anything. Kamala Harris dodged the question. She don't want to talk about civil litera mortis. Black people, it's a status thing maybe. But she doesn't want to address any kind of uh, assistance whatsoever towards the people who are seen as dead in the eyes of the law. They don't, they don't feel committed to us. And I say us, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying to uh, act like I'm going to separate myself from my people. I'm going to say us. They don't feel obligated to, uh, you know, because to be honest with you, what there's been a lack of over the past 30 to 40 years after Malcolm got killed and other, uh, other of our leaders were assassinated is black intelligentsia. So they're going to continue to spin you in circles until you into, into, in, in, until you, um, uh, face them, right? With intellectual warfare, you have to engage them until you begin to engage them in what is known as intellectual warfare, meaning that your talking points are stronger than theirs, meaning that you're basically checkmating them with the questions that you ask and the in the in the in the rebuttals to the BS that they keep throwing at us until they begin to feel that and see that they will never switch up their playbook. In 2020, they have been forced. In 2019, going into 2020, they have been forced by black intelligentsia to switch up their playbook. And they know that the things that they were getting over with ever since the late 60s is not going down anymore. So once again, I salute those that are out there who are utilizing their platforms to do what? To, to, to create a rumbling Inside of the jungle, I got to salute y'all. I got to salute y'all. You feel me? Real talk. So go ahead. I mean, so with that being said, brother, I'm trying to figure out why are we so loyal to the Democratic Party? It seems as though we act like there's nothing else we could. If there's Trump, I only we, we you know what the famous saying is? Mm -hmm. I have to pick my poison. Yeah. So I pick. Bernie Sanders, so I pick Hillary Clinton, so I pick Bill Clinton, so I pick, uh, name another Democrat, whoever the Democrat is. I pick whoever that, B Barack Obama. Walter Cronkite. Talk to me about the, I, I, I have to pick my poison philosophy that black people have used throughout all these years and has it served us or hurted us? Well, black people throughout all of their years have been, you know, Pulled in many different directions. When we were at our most progressive, when we were landowners, business owners, uh, when we had banks, when we had, uh, you know, standing armies, you know, when we had the means of production, we were known as black Republicans, okay? This was when we were Republicans. Please go and do your research and don't attack me in the comments. When we switched over to Democrats or Democrats, we began to fall under the quote unquote trichnology or the trickery of these politicians or politicians or politicians or politicians. Okay? So we did a lecture recently called The Three-Headed Monster, and we showed how LBJ said publicly, this is on record, 
that I will have these niggas voting Democrat for the next 200 years. Okay. I believe it was JFK or one of them who basically enticed our people to begin to rally behind the Democratic Party. But during the Civil War, the Democrats were, quote unquote, the enemy. They were the ops. They were the ones who were affiliated with the KKK. All right. The Democrats. It was the republic for which we stand that our people got behind. We were part of the republic. Shout out to Jay-Z and Nas. Black Republicans. We were black Republicans. Go and do the research on the Wilmington Massacre. Go and do the research on so many other things. When we were at our best. When we were at our heights. When we were quote unquote dripping. In the 1800s we were, we were Republicans. So I don't know what the hell's going on with these parties and whatnot, but we always say that it's two wings to a vulture, and that's the Democratic and the Republican Party, two wings to the same bird. You feel me? Yeah. Hegelian dialect, mm. protagonist, antagonist, divide and conquer, the oldest game play. You go and write. You go and read yourself some Machiavelli. Go and read you some Sun Tzu. Mm. It's the oldest game in the book. Mm -hmm. You play both sides. And then you play the middle as you play both sides, yeah. bipartisan. It's a, far, it's a farce. You go to Capitol Hill right now, he, them niggas giving each other lap dances. You feel me? It's not, there's no separation in, in, at the end of the day. It's just what frequency are you moving with? Don't ever come to me about liberal, uh, a democratic liberal. All that is is a, a Jewish LBGT white man or a white woman who are pushing... Um, Everything opposite of traditionalism, meaning that if we lived in a country that followed traditionalism, we would we would basically be moving right through hierarchies, through bloodlines. Right. We would be we would be moving completely different with the liberals and what democracy does is they promote what is known as individualism. OK, individualism is a cancer to any kind of socialistic countries, any kind of communist, uh, communist countries and whatnot, because how they move, they move as they move like Voltron. They move as a body. They don't move as an individual. They move as a body. You see that in China. You'll see that in Russia. You saw that with Venezuela. That's a failed experiment and whatnot. Uh, allegedly, you see that in Iran and other places, they're not moving as individuals. <laughs> they don't promote that in their they don't promote that in their in their in their quote unquote um, the makeup of their of their of their society. You there's a hierarchy. You understand? This is your position. Play that position. This is this is this is what this is your family. This is what they did throughout their bloodline. This is what you'll be doing throughout your bloodline. I know it sounds arcane to people because they're so uh, you know assimilated and whatnot, and Americanized and Westernized and whatnot that they, they they don't know that. I'm just pointing out the different parties and how wars began and how wars are going to follow up in the near future. This is what it is. It's the it's the friction between. These, these independent, individualistic uh, societies versus the traditionalistic societies where they're like, yo, we don't want McDonald's over here. We don't want none of the westernized influences over here. We do not want democracy because we know that democracy is uh, it's, it's like a coup. It's a virus. It's malware. It doesn't work. So I'm not a fan of democracy. I'm more so about third parties. If we're going to talk about anything, you understand? And not really necessarily the Green Party. You know, I feel that we have the power, the influence and the numbers to create our own standalone party to go against. And we could kill them with the truth. To go against the Democrats and the Republics because it could be shown in a one hour or two hour PowerPoint keynote presentation who they are versus who they're not. So you got to get them up out of here like they, they, they don't serve our purpose. I'm talking about ADOS. I'm talking about, you know, I'm talking about the, 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 the people who are indigenous to this land. Aboriginal people who are indigenous to this land, indigenous people who are indigenous to this land, those brothers and sisters who can identify through DNA tests. I just got my my father just brought back the DNA test for us. 
Benin, Congo, Virginia, right? Maryland. They show you the whole goddamn uh, bloodline. They show you all of the years and everything. They show you the trajectory of your bloodline. And I understand that it's about patriarchal lineage and whatnot. So, you know, our people got to, uh, you know, we got to believe in ourselves. We really have to believe in ourselves because we the shit. And we make things move and shake. And if anybody had any doubt, like you were saying, go on Black Twitter and check out what's going on right now. Go in, go on M go go on MSNBC, go on Fox Five. They're talking about what's going on without talking about it. So, you know, <clears throat> it is what it is. If Trump could do it, right? Because he did the same thing in sixteen. If Trump could galvanize the grassroots movement of 4chan, uh, the, the, the young white uh, fragilisis and the, the young white uh, inferiority complex sufferers on 4chan, Reddit and all of these other things. If he could get uh, uh, the little niggas at the WWF uh, fights, if he could galvanize them, right? Uh, Candace Owens and all these moist niggas in red hats, if he could galvanize them. Then we can begin to galvanize individuals in our community by working cohesively uh, in an in a, in a, in a organized effort. Okay? Indeed, indeed, man. I mean, wow. I appreciate the talk, Red Pill. Um, in terms of Trump. Mm hmm. And we are we 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 see Trump is Trump is not a white Trump is like a white extremist. We see that that's kind of quite obvious the way he talks, the way he moves. But what I want to ask you is that has your life changed? The, the way people act, mm -hmm. uh, they act like their life has turned to, to to so bad since Trump been in office. Like oh my God, America! They act like America has changed more in the last four years, and that it was totally different mm -hmm. in the last three hundred years or whatever. Yeah. But in the last four years, it went to shit to a shithole. Yeah. Like all of a sudden, we're and as black people, we're like, "What are you talking about? It's always been like this." So when you see the immigrants in the in the war, how do you feel about the war and then the kids, children missing? Does that Im, uh, as because the reason why I ask is because they expect us to be the moral authority of the world. Mm -hmm. So do you feel bad and are you like we got to get rid of Trump or are you like yo we've been going through this like this ain't nothing new with America? How Look, do you feel, Red? Lyndon Johnson was racist. Andrew Jackson was racist. Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, you understand George Bush Sr. and his retarded ass son. They were all white extremists. They were all imperialists. You understand? Uh, Eisenhower, all of them were imperialists. All of them were pieces of shit. Okay? Not worthy of any kind of praise whatsoever by people with melanin in their, uh, in their makeup. So to say that Trump is racist and he's no, he's just following tradition. There's nothing different than he's doing than what he. What about the trail of tears? Mm. What about the war on drugs? What about the war on poverty? You know how many bodies that caught? You know what I'm saying? You know how many uh, households that destroyed? You know how many children that they got stuck at the border doing all of that? So we've been inundated, you know, by policy from a domestic standpoint and also uh, foreign policy as well. You know, foreign policy uh, was responsible for regime changes. Foreign policy was, re was responsible for the murder of, of African leaders. You know what I'm talking about? Gaddafi. Uh, you know, so many people. Um, foreign policy was res responsible for regime change in uh, South America, which resulted in, you know, the rise of the quote unquote narco states, mm -hmm. which resulted in millions of people getting uh, killed over the drug trade that the quote unquote CIA was on the top of Air America, Oliver North type thing. Mm -hmm. You understand? George Bush Sr., when he was the head of the CIA. You know what I mean? 
calling plays and running routes, hitting jugs. That's what they do. So until, you know, one time, so it's the question is, is the Joker, right, bad? If Is Heath Ledger, a.k.a. Donald Trump, bad for the White House? Not at all. It needs to, you know, Olympus has fallen. So who but Donald Trump to be the right candidate to completely put it in the ground where it belongs? The empire already fell. Like I said, this is the 400 year anniversary of the curse that they said you niggas got on your backs. You understand? When are you going to talk about that? Donald Trump signed that shit into law and said, get busy, niggas. Mm -hmm. Like, make that make that revelation come true. What's the revelation? The revelation is you're supposed to take the keys to the throne at the end of the 400 years. If it goes past, if it goes 401, like Levi's. Well, you know what I'm talking about? You're going to be cursed for eternity. So this is, you got to turn up. He's helping you turn up. I, I like my vampires with their fangs, with their fangs out. You feel me? I like my, I, I appreciate my vampires with their fangs out. I don't like the passive vampire shit. Ed Buck types, you know what I mean? I don't like that. I don't like the Ed Buck niggas, you know what I mean? The, the sweet talk you into the motherfucking condo and whatnot. Like, that's the type of shit that black people are, are looking forward to. They want to be coddled before they get hung. I'm not with all of that. Like, give me my, give me my shit straight up. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. he, give me my dope with no fentanyl. You know what I'm saying? So that's what he represents. He's giving it to you straight up with no chaser. He's forcing the other white fragilists to, to, to bring their fangs out and whatnot. And it's good for people like me and, and people who are on the front lines who, at the end of the day, we not looking. We not looking to kumbaya. You know what I'm saying? This is not the Kanye video where everybody's in the bed together. You know what I mean? Like we not looking to lay down with you niggas. So at the end of it, we're not. We're not Black Lives Matter. We not looking for. It's not a Tinder date. We're not looking for somebody to lay up with. You know what I mean? That's what a lot of these people from the bed winches to some of these moist niggas. They're looking for white people to lay up with. They just want to be accepted mm -hmm. so they could continue the process of laying up. Talk to me nice. You know, like Tiffany Haddish, them. Talk to me nice. You know what I mean? Don't call me a nigga until you until you really getting it in. And then you could call me all kind of porch monkeys and everything, but then it's too late. That's how they want it. They want a seat at the table. We want the table, fam. We want the whole kitchen. How about that? So if we if we're serious about this, if we're willing to go hard with this. If we're willing to push the if we're willing to push the needle a little bit further, then we're gonna see the results that has been prophesized that we're supposed to see in 2019. And shame on all of you lames who didn't make it past 2018, who couldn't make it into the Jubilee year. You know what I mean? Y'all supposed to have been here at this platinum party, but you canceled yourself out. So, you know, woe was you. But yeah, I mean, you know, don't get the I mean, if, 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 if the if the two years of his presidency has not shown you that all of them are on code, you understand? From the Democrats to the Republicans, you know what I'm talking about? All of them are rolling behind they, like they all rolling with Trump, even Bernie Sanders and them. Don't be fooled. If this has not shown you what it really is then there's nothing that Brother Rich or Red Pill can help you with at the end. It is, it, it's a done data. You know what I mean? You might as well just put on your, uh, your, your Pokemon pajamas and lay up. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a done data. Like, there's nothing we could do for you. But for those whose eyes are open, whose antennas are activated, whose spidey sense is on, will pull up because, you know, this, this, this is the jubilee year. It's so much more to come after this. You understand? Our babies are anticipating us to pave a way and to make it right. And if, they, if, if, if you don't receive reparations, you live inside of a boom. You better cook that shit up. You better make the you I mean, not revelations, reparations. If you don't receive your reparations, you, we, we could collectively come together and put our minds together and cook up some reparations. And I'm not talking about crack on the pot either. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but... Man, Red, with all that being said, uh, I appreciate the talk. 
Give yeah. your contact info, my brother. Yeah, so new could, drip. How about it? Yeah. Yeah, new drip. <laughs> Holla at us. You know what I'm saying? We got the couture line. You know, thank God that we have avenues like this to talk to the people. Yeah. Immediately after we started talking, I got contacted by the right kind of plug. What you know I've been what? Listen, 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 listen real quick. For the motherfuckers, and I'm going to get belligerent right now. <laughs> For the motherfuckers that keep saying stop being reactionaries, the motherfuckers need to shut the fuck up. We need to react to bullshit like Gucci. You know why? Because it gets shit done. If That's me right. and Red ain't react to Gucci, Red wouldn't have a couture line right now. If they didn't react to Rosa Parks, if they didn't react to Emmett Till, shit wouldn't have got done. You, We get so caught up. Like, we have these, um, uh, Tariqa, slogans. Uh, okay. and, and, and we get caught up in the slogans like, oh, re you're reactionary. That we apply that to every fucking thing. Yeah. Cut the bullshit out. Some things you have to react to. Yeah, look. Some we're... things you have to... Attention is the new currency. That's why right. are you giving that your attention? I have to give my attention. You know why? Because that shit inspires me. If it don't inspire you, don't give it your attention. Me talking about Trump once in a while inspires my motherfucking ass. That's I want to start a new business when I talk about Trump and Michael Cohen. Because you know what? You know what I thought about today, Red? Michael Cohen sent his daughter to school in London. He laid it all out. In London. And I'm like, this motherfucker yo, sent his daughter to he school. He laid it all I'm out. I'm like, listen, I got inspired by that. I said, if, yo, if they could do that, I could do That's that. That's right. If, listen, you, stop, if you know what no, to listen for. No, no, cut for, it out. No, Red, let me talk. Stop telling me or, or us all these slogans that you that you learned within the last two, three years. On black Twitter. And that you're on black Twitter or Instagram. You don't know what the fuck it means and you're applying it. I don't want to hear, oh, energy is your currency. You don't even know what energy is your currency mean. You don't even know what motherfucking all this shit they saying. They don't know, Red. They just saying it because it sounds cool. Yeah. It sounds cool. Cut the shit out. I'm going to talk about Trump when I, I know what the fuck I'm doing. That's right. Leave me the fuck alone. That's right. And I'm, just, I'm, the, and I'm not talking have about me. Faith. Have some faith in your brothers. Have some faith in me. I'm talking about just... Yo. It, it's not even because they don't come at me. I just see the people on... Don't about and, that. Like, cut all Fam, that. I just got uh, an iPhone, right? Yeah. And on it, it has an icon for podcasts, right? And so I, I was like, let me go and check it out. I pulled up an old underground radio, <laughs> UGRR, the episode with Ra Omar. Ooh, this was 10 crazy. years ago. This was 2007, I think. No, my bad. This was 09. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, trust your brothers who've been doing this longer than you've been awoke. <laughs> trust your brothers who paved the way and opened up the doors and helped write some of the code that you following right now. Brother Rich been doing, that shit blew me away. Like, Brother Rich is an icon. He's been need, he's been 10 toes down doing his thing, asking the right questions, and he been, and he been on the pulse. He ain't been off. It's a lot of people that are completely off. They talking about all kind of shit that don't got nothing to do with our edification, with our upliftment, with none of that, with our empowerment. And y'all give y'all give a lot of of your time and attention to those people. Why don't you, uh, why don't you hold your uh, your comments for that shit? But the brother's been on. He's been on point. He's been following a lot of things. He's been introducing you to a plethora of thought leaders and teachers and speakers and scholars and even leaders. So I understand what people say about these quote unquote hot button topics and whatnot. But like we were explaining, we're out here dealing with this. If we're the media, we got to cover certain things. And we know the times that we live in. So we take teaching moments and we teach. That's what we do. We take teaching moments and we teach. It would be remissive of me to not talk about fashion. And I've been doing, I'm pioneer. I'm a pioneer in this conscious fashion shit. I'm a pioneer in the streetwear and whatnot. So I'm, it would be remissive of me to not touch, to touch on what Gucci is doing to, to, to help wake Negroes up. And I'm not talking about the 90% of people who can't afford Gucci. What about the 10% who've been throwing bags and been throwing? I got a sister. 
right, before we end this, she sent me a picture of her selling 20 Gucci bags. She made a few thousand dollars and then went and bought equipment for her and her family to start their own business. How about that? How about that? She sold all of them bullshit ass bags on eBay or wherever she sold them at, right? Got about 10 bands to 20 bands up and then started her legacy. Mm. Because of the video that we did, she was highly inspired. So with that being said, love and like to the family. Please promote those who promote you. Like I said, we, 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 we stepped into the couture business. I'm going to step out with that jacket next video. You know what I'm talking about? Indeed. But indeed. I've been in a lab all winter. Um, I don't even, I'm not outside anymore. Everything is internet based. This is, this, you know, I'm, I'm expanding. My, my, my goal is to grow, to big, to blow up and to be inside of a factory. I'm talking to people in Africa right now. They want to bring us over there to show us their factories. I was in Vegas. We talking about doing a magic show and workshops, how to start your own business, clothing business. Everything is exploding right now. But we're still in a hibernation season. I'm not even supposed to be on film. But whenever Rich call, I pull up. You feel me? So we just working. We doing what we do. We in El Chapo's tunnel right now. Moving that weight. You know what I'm talking about? That's Chapo. Weight. Yeah, we moving them bricks. But love and light to the family. You know what I'm talking about? And we not doing Bernie this year. Man, Shout out hey, to Killer Mike. Oh, shit. Bernie? No Bernie? Oh, we ain't doing Bernie. Weekends at Bernie's. We not oh, doing that. Man. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Shout out to Killer Mike. You know what I mean? No offense to your boy and whatnot, but we not doing Bernie. Yeah, we not doing Bernie. Peace, family. All right. One. Life is beautiful like Sea Asia. My entrance was independent, but we major. The challenge that's killing me is to balance humility with my ability to stunt like Lee Major. When I was pissing poor, I had a vision board as my screensaver. I envisioned tours on G4s, mink blazers, hopping out with pink gators, Unhinging doors like C4, ringing alarms like tennis saw, P more. Had the club going up like seesaws. Abroad, we score so much, no need to keep score. Petite broads who eat raw, greet us at customs, teach us the customs and traditions of foreign soil. Royal dignitaries sending emissaries to meet moors.